Starting off at number 10, we have Simmers voting for Laundry Day. Not so much now, but in the past, the Sims team often used to do questionnaires and they would ask Simmers to rate the packs that they want. And of course, the majority of Simmers unanimously decided they want to wash their clothes. Of all the fun things that we could have had in the Sims 4 and they want to wash clothes. <laughs> the reason why this was quite controversial is because a lot of people complained. Why on earth do you want laundry in the Sims 4 of all things? Why are you making us pay for laundry? And I remember so many Simmers were shocked at the time. Like, why did so many people vote for laundry? Are you all boring? Do you like the boring things in life? I mean, I suppose the reason why the Sims 1 had its charm back in the day is because people just wanted to do mundane things. They wanted to see their Sims get a job and clean the house and cook dinner. Apparently that was fun. That was the whole thing about the Sims at the time. So in a way I can see it, but still it was controversial, which is why it's just number 10. At number nine, we have the loading screen. Before the Sims 4, we had the Sims 3. Now the Sims 3 had a very, 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 very long loading screen. It was pretty severe, but that's because the Sims 3 was open world. And the thing is, once you got through that loading screen, that was it. The game was loaded and you had no more loading screens because it was an open world. And then the Sims 4 came along and they reintroduced a closed world system and loading screens. At the time, a lot of Simmers were very, very divisive because some people said they wanted the open world back. Other people said they didn't really mind a five to 10 second loading screen if it meant that their game played a lot better. I'm in the second half of people who actually liked the idea of a semi-closed world system with a loading screen. And gradually over time, a lot of Simmers did start to appreciate the loading screen as it meant that their game performed a lot better. The controversies come much later on down the line when the loading screens are honestly taking so long. It's actually taking even longer than The Sims 3 in some cases, especially if you have any CC or mods, it will take a very long time. And especially if you have a lot of different packs installed. Luckily now I have a dancing Bone Hilda modded loading screen, so it looks a lot nicer. But before then, it was incredibly dull. With The Sims team introducing even more packs in the future, we can almost guarantee that this loading screen is going to get even longer. And to actually cause a problem that it was there to defeat in the first place, which is long loading times. At number eight, we have the skin tones pre-update. Right now, The Sims 4 actually has a lot of different skin tone swatches. There's literally so many, and there's even a slider to change it even more. Back in the day, the swatches were bloody awful. As you can see on this picture I found on Google, the swatches were honestly so limited. And worse of all, the darker skin tones actually had a lot of glitching and shadowing issues, which made them look literally terrible. This isn't the first time The Sims team have been accused of whitewashing. As you can see, the iconic Bella Goth was definitely a victim to this. In fact, as you can see in this Reddit post, you can see how whitewashed the Sims are gradually going throughout all of their different games, especially the Caliente sisters. I mean, look at that difference. The Sims team did state that they're going to start refreshing townies. As you can see, they did do that with the goth family. But since then, they've basically abandoned the project. We've heard absolutely no news about it. The Sims team are terrible for abandoning things. So it looks like all of the other whitewashed townies are not turning back anytime soon. At number seven, we have have Journey to Batu. I remember when the initial trailer for this came out, it wasn't the most popular thing, but people weren't crazy mad. They just thought it would be like a fun collaboration between The Sims 4 and Star Wars. And that's until the actual gameplay came out. The actual pack comes with a brand new world, which is a direct recreation of the Star Wars Galaxy Edge attraction found at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. It contains a storyline that's kind of like The Sims 4 Strangerville. The only issue is you can't really do anything outside of that storyline. So the world itself, you can't build in the world. You can't do anything. There's no usable lots in the world. You can't live there. None of the cast it comes with is appropriate outside the Star Wars world. None of the build by items are. And even if you did want to use a build by items in the world, you can't because there are no buildable lots in the world. It's basically just this totally separate Star Wars experience, but put in The Sims 4. It's a very, very strange thing. And it's got absolutely nothing to do with The Sims. EA are not the best company at understanding fan expectations. And it really, really shone through with this one. At number six, we have My First Pet Stuff. My First Pet Stuff includes stuff for pets, but in order to have pets in The Sims 4, you need the Cats and Dogs expansion pack, which is DLC. I think it's pretty safe to say that in general, gamers are pretty sick of DLC across the board. So for EA to take that a step further and give us literal DLC for DLC, that was just icing on top of the cake that is the sh 
Dorm, that is The Sims 4. The Pets Pack has always been the most popular pack for any Sims game, so it would make actually a lot of sense to release more pet stuff for the game if people are into it. But the thing about the My First Pet stuff controversy is a lot of the stuff in there should have really just been included with the Cats and Dogs pack, especially seeming that a lot of the styles in there are very similar to some of the styles in Cats and Dogs. And I think it's important to note that this pack came out about five months after the release of Cats and Dogs, which is just way too soon for that kind of DLC. Even more controversially though, allegedly The Sims 4 My First Pet stuff actually sold really, really well, and it's one of the most popular stuff packs in the whole Sims community. The content itself is not terrible, it just should have been included in Cats and Dogs. <laughs> At number five, we have the collaborations. The Sims has never been shy to having collaborations. I remember in The Sims 2 days, we had the Ikea stuff pack, the H&M stuff pack, they went down quite well. In The Sims 4 era, the first major one that I can think of is a Moschino stuff pack. The reason why people love The Sims 2 H&M fashion stuff is because it was relatable. People can relate to that fashion. What people cannot relate to is very, very expensive designer fashion that nobody can afford to wear. And it's not just the relatability and the money side of things that got Simmers if with Moschino stuff. The actual fashion that came in this pack was pretty terrible. It didn't even really come with that much fashion. The worst of all, it came with a photographer career, but that ended up being a base game thing anyway. It didn't come with a modeling career, which a lot of people expected it to. And it actually ended up coming with a lot more build by than it did fashion, just rendering the whole point of the pack useless. And then of course we have the Mac makeup. For some unknown reason, the Sims team decided to do a collaboration with Mac and give us the iconic sperm eyeliner that we all know and don't love. I mean, it's just so blocky. Like you think from a makeup brand, they'd actually make effort, but they didn't. The two-tone Mac lipstick is even worse. I don't know any Simmer who's really managed to pull this one off. To be fair, this only one lipstick swatch I do see a lot of Simmers use, although even then it is still quite striking for the Sims 4 color palette. And that wasn't the only controversial Mac collaboration. The Sims and Mac actually collaborated to create a Sims palette. I know absolutely nothing about makeup, but this is apparently a palette that a lot of people like, I don't, what do you do with palettes? Put them on your eyes? I don't know. Anyway, the reason why the palette was so controversial is because it literally did not represent the Sims at all. As you can see, the box had the Sims blue and it had the logo on it. But as you can see by the names of all the swatches, they've got nothing to do with the Sims 4. To make it even worse, the palette was actually rehashed from an old Mac palette, which means it was just old colors that already existed. They just changed the box on the outside and said, hey, this is the Sims now. If anything screams carelessness, it was this collaboration. And then of course we have the Journey Spatu collaboration, although we've already talked about Star Wars and how tragic that was. At number four, we have the 20th anniversary gift. You think 20 years old is quite a lot for a video game series? So you think they do something really big and bold, but do you know what they did do? A hot tub. Any OG Simmers are thinking, yes, the iconic Sims 1 heart-shaped hot tub, or the rather sultry red Sims 2 hot tub. But do you know what we got instead? This monstrosity. I personally have never seen a hot tub with a roof before, until now apparently. You think for a 20th anniversary, they bring back all of the iconic Sims items from before. The iconic hot tub, some of the iconic Sims 2 outfits or Sims 3 objects, but nope, we just got this ugly thing. And that's all the 20th anniversary basically was. 20 is a very big number and I think even EA was disappointed with this one. And I think it just goes to show how the current Max's team is out of touch with the older Sims games. You think with at least a couple of senior people who have been there from the start, they take appreciation for the older Sims games and where the series has come, but unfortunately not. And I think it just goes to show the way EA now just treats the Sims series as a cash grab money making machine rather than a game that is actually designed to be good and please the long term fans. Because the majority of people who have played The Sims are older people who have been playing it for a very long time. Most of its players are not young. EA have tried very very hard to make The Sims 4 more family friendly and more fun but they failed every time and that's because it suits an older audience who have been there from the start. So of course we expect more from a 20th anniversary. At number three we have My Wedding Stories. I could chat about My Wedding Stories all day. First up we have the Russia controversy. This all happened before the Ukraine Russia war. It was a completely different topic. Basically the trailer of My Wedding Stories and the promotion shows a lesbian couple. EA rather randomly made the decision not to release this pack, not just in Russia but the whole of Eastern Europe pretty much. And that's because the promotions would violate Russia's laws forbidding material 
materials that promote homosexuality. But then came an outcry of other Eastern European people saying, hey, we can't get the game either. And the only reason why it was banned in Russia is just because the cover art showed a lesbian couple. In America, where The Sims 4 is from, I definitely think there is this cultural thing of cancelling, boycotting kind of action taking and too right Russia doesn't get this pack because of their horrible laws. But then we had a load of Eastern European and Russian Simmers saying, hey, we use this game as a safe space to get away from all of that. Why can't we have it just change the box art so it's not homosexual? The game has always had homosexual themes. It's always been legal in Russia. All you have to do is change the box art and then we can have it and then we can enjoy the game in our safe space. And EA didn't listen and they still continued to not release a pack in Russia. It was only when a load of big Sims YouTubers were complaining about it online and said, hey, we're not going to be covering the promotion of this pack because what you're doing is wrong. That's when EA panicked and they decided to release it in Russia anyway. Were they scared that Big Sims YouTubers wouldn't be promoting the pack and they'd lose money? Allegedly, in my opinion, yes, that is true. The Sims team and EA are pretty much terrible at letting themselves get way too influenced by Sims influencers instead of the wider fan base in general. Even with the skin tones pre-update number eight on our list, I remember literally nothing happened until a load of big influential Sims content creators spoken about it. Again, showing that EA is very out of touch with its player base and terrible at setting expectations. And then of course we have the My Wedding Stories live stream. This live stream was the biggest train wreck of all. Even the EA employees who had to talk about this game in the live stream were honestly so monotonous and unmotivated and not caring about it at all. You can tell absolutely no thought went into this pack. The best thing is I saw the most hilarious TikTok about it. I'm gonna try my best to find it and pull it on screen now. It basically just shows expectation versus reality or live stream versus the trailer and it just goes to show how bad the pack was. Not only that of course then we actually had the Simfluencers pre-release reviews. We all know the Sims 4 has the EA Game Changer program or EA Create a Network where they give some Simmers in the Sims community who are active on Twitter the packs early. Usually a lot of these Sims content creators hype packs up because it gets them the views. However on this occasion everybody slated the pack and then they never played it again. There were no My Wedding Stories Let's Plays, no videos, just nothing, silence. And then of course we have the actual game release itself. The Sims 4 My Wedding Stories is horrific. I actually did a Let's Play about a month ago where I tested to see if My Wedding Stories was actually fixed or still broken. Surprise, surprise, it is still terribly broken. I could not get the pack to work roughly 90 to 95% of the time. And even more controversially, they're still selling this pack in its current state with no efforts made to fix it and its full price, which is horrific. In fact, there are even mods now that actually remove the gameplay elements of My Wedding Stories so you can just keep the build buying cast but revert to the old base game weddings because even the base game weddings were much better. That's how bad it was. At number two on our list, we have the game launch. The game launch of The Sims 4 was very, very, very sad. It had no toddlers, no pools, no ghosts, no basements, no dishwashers, no cars, no spiral staircases, no bunk beds, no open world, no burglars, no etc, etc, etc. In fact, a lot of the things that the game was missing are still missing now. That's actually because The Sims 4 originally wasn't intended to be The Sims 4. It was supposed to be an online game. This online game got cancelled after the controversy, which was The Sim City reboot, which further much calls The Sims team to completely scrap The Sims online project to turn it into The Sims 4. And of course, it was made in a rush, so it was a complete state. And that's why The Sims 4 is still a state and will always be a state. At number one, we have everything. EA are pretty much the most controversial video game publisher out there. I think all gamers can unanimously agree that. Like, there's no turning back from that statement. Nobody can say otherwise. Even EA know they're controversial and they don't even care. Out of all The Sims games, The Sims 4 has probably been the most severe when it comes to controversy. Not even just out of The Sims, but out of video games in general. There aren't that many big video games these days that really top all of the controversies that are happening in The Sims 4. And even just the existence of The Sims 4 under EA in its entire state is just generally extremely controversial. Another controversy is I do think The Sims 4 was made for the snowflake generation and that's why it's quite bad. If you want to know why, I have a whole video for that here. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.